Bamboo's building blobs, nozzle removal reignites rage, and Prusha puzzles professional. And oh yeah, if you're going to Smurf, you can pie me in the face. All this and more, Print Fix Friday, episode 169. Nice. Let's get into it. Jumping right into, if you're going to be at Smurf tomorrow, you should definitely uh, come in the giving mood because we're gonna have a bit of a fun event for you guys. I'm looking forward to meeting you all there where you'll have the opportunity to do this. We have camera lady Amber here who's gonna show you how we're gonna raise money this year. I think she enjoys that a little bit too much. We're gonna raise money by, well, pieing me in the face, but it's a game of chance as well. Stay tuned to find out more. It's gonna get a little bit messy because she was nice. You don't really have to be. You can have as much fun as you want, but you gotta get lucky. If you hit a D20 or a D6 on the right number, you're gonna get a nice plate like this and you're gonna make me look a little bit crazy. Every single penny of the money that we raise goes directly to Sanjay Mortimer Foundation to help neurodiverse makers like myself and like many of you out there. So, oh, I hate to say this, but get out your wallets because it's gonna get messy for me at your all's expense. It's gonna be a lot of fun. We'll see you at Smurf. And don't worry, if you're not there, you can still win. More information coming soon. Yes, you'll actually have the chance to pie me in the face and the actual die that it's gonna be used, the D20, is printing behind me right now. If it's not obvious, these videos are filmed ahead of time. <laughs> Movie magic, if you will. Starting off with my good buddy, Stefan of CNC Kitchen, who recently took the big step in going full-time content creator and also getting a shop with a couple of other content creators, including one of my favorite woodworkers, Marius Hornberger. I'm really excited to see what those awesome makers will make in their making maker shed of making. But we've got a Bamboo X1 Carbon here who, uh, you know, is a little bit upset saying the curse when you try to print Prusa filament on a Bamboo Lab printer. I want to point a couple of things out on this one. This is a really old X1 Carbon. They have not used that style of cable in a long time. And I don't know when Bamboo transitioned away from the semi-transparent extruder, but it was a long time ago. This machine has likely seen a lot of hours, and theoretically, he's had some pretty good prints on it. This, however, was not one of them. It looks like the print itself popped off the build plate, got wrapped around the nozzle, and chaos ensued that eventually results in a little bit of pain where uh, you're not really saving a lot on that hot end. The problem with the bamboo hot end is also one of its, like, strong selling points is that it's not really designed to be serviced if you have problems like this but it is super easy to replace it so you can just take it off torch it if you want but if your electrical connections are still there your thermistor and your heater are both still functioning heat up the printer and just leave it alone for a little bit let it warm up let it get that filament that's wrapped all around that hot end nice and soft so you can just kind of peel it off. It's kind of gross. Please use pliers when you do this. Be very careful of the wires we can see. I believe that's one of the thermistor wires right there, and those are crazy, crazy delicate. You are going to need to replace the sock, so that one's out of here. See you later, nerd. But I think I know what happened. Based upon all the comments from our six-month review of the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, clearly all of my problems were because of the build plate. And if I am correct, I'm fairly certain that I am, Stefan is using a Wham Bam Carbon Fiber build plate. Shiny build plates and the LiDAR on the bamboo don't normally go together very well. While it is technically lidar it's not lidar how most of us think of lidar but their system uses a laser line and then a camera to detect how that laser line is interacting with the surfaces around it if it is reflective it can't detect it very well and will often give a bad reading which can result in a poor first layer now is that what happened here i'm not certain but it is something that we see way more often than not when 
shiny build plates are used on X1 carbons and all that first layer scanning and LiDAR and all that kind of stuff is still activated. It's one of those cases where you get really comfortable with your machine and you trust it to do its job. And as soon as you trust it, it decides, nah. I'm gonna do my own thing. Moving on to my buddy Bearded Printer, who actually designed the pieces that are running behind us right now, which is super cool. Thank you for doing that, by the way. Uh, so if you are going to Smurf and you want to check out one of Bearded Printer's designs that we kept very quiet until this exact moment, come check it out. It's a really cool large D20 that completely unfolds so that I can pack it in my luggage and it's not a pain in the butt to do it. So. Thank you, Bearded Printer, for making that happen. He's got a bit of a brain fart thing and posted in our Patreon Discord, which you can join at the $10 tier and higher. Links, of course, in that description where you know where to find it. But he said, I clearly had a bit of a brain fart here when I decided to run this part in vase mode. Not exactly certain what I expected. So we can see that the top layers on this part did not work very well. They shrunk and pulled away from the other lines themselves. Could this theoretically work in vase mode? Potentially, this top section right there, I don't think would print very well in vase mode, but the rest of it theoretically should print pretty darn well. But top surfaces like that, especially when you're overlapping layers with very, very little bit of overlap, you know, where they're just barely touching, will have a tendency to pull apart from each other instead of sticking. That's kind of where vase mode tends to fail. A print here with two walls, not vase mode, would have likely worked just fine. I would love to see a style of vase mode where we can use wider extrusions and it can vary the extrusion width based upon the layer above and below it. I know that's overly complicating things, but I think that'd be pretty cool. Is that already possible? Let me know what you guys think because that would solve some issues like this where you know that the layers going on top of it are going to create problems. So if we made their extrusions a little bit wider, they would stack better and not pull away like we see. Otherwise, the only real solution is to add more perimeters, which removes vase mode, which removes the exact purpose that Bearded Printer was going after here. So I don't know, man. Bearded Printer does make some really awesome pieces, and we're going to be featuring his along with some of yours in an upcoming series called Makers Making Awesome. So if you do have some really awesome designs that you want to submit, you can email them to us, youtube at 3dmusketeers.com, because especially with a lot of new people getting 3D printers for the holidays, it's nice to have a known area where you can go to print cool models that aren't just, you know, plastic tchotchkes. Moving on to someone who did not read the instructions on how to replace the nozzles. I just wanted to share the pain I'm having. Almost seems like it was factory installed with an impact driver, uh, with its technical name being called an Ugga Dugga. And exactly how many Ugga Duggas is required here is when Righty Tidy becomes Righty Lucy. That's how you know. You have added one too many Ugga Duggas. F's in the chat for those that have had this happen before. I would never, never done that before because I am obviously an expert. I never make mistakes and I never have print failures. Nope. Nope, that's never happened to me. Uh, so what, what's happened here, Grant, right? Get to the point, obviously. We've got an individual that attempted to remove a nozzle without it being hot. Nozzles and hot ends in general should be assembled when hot. And if you're wondering how hot, as hot as you can reasonably do it. On an all-metal hot end, 280C, good numbers. I don't like to go much higher than 280 because you can tend to thermal runaway when you put pliers on it. If you have a non-all-metal hot end, 240 is about as hot as I would go. Otherwise, you start to risk damaging the PTFE liner. If you would like, you can pull the liner out, heat the hot end higher, but make sure you cool it back down before you put the liner back in, because otherwise, you can off-gas some pretty nasty chemicals from that PTFE liner that are toxic to everything, including humans. Unfortunately, there's no way to salvage this, but you can get the bit that is broken out. This nozzle sheared in ways we don't normally see them shear. It sheared at a thin point, which I'm a little worried about the quality of this nozzle, but we're gonna move past that and into how you can get this out. You need to heat this hot end up. It's obviously been removed from the printer, so you're limited on what you can do from here. What we would recommend is to put it in a vise 
torch the crap out of it, and then go ahead and unscrew the brass, because as soon as you get that nice and toasty, the brass part is going to become quite a bit more loose. You can get a left-handed drill bit. Yes, that's actually a thing. No, it's not like the blinker fluid your cousin had you go get from the auto parts store, but you can salvage what's left of this hot end. The heat break and the heat block are likely totally fine here. You just gotta get that piece of brass out. If the pliers don't work, the left-handed drill bit should turn it right out, or a set of easy outs will work as well. Just make sure that you're not galling the threads and you're not damaging the heat block itself. Ultimately, this is not an expensive part, so if you do just decide to outright replace it, that's fine too. I totally understand there is a level of labor involved that you don't wanna do, that I don't want to do, that the viewers don't want to do, and 10 bucks to replace it is way easier 95% of the time than actually going through the labor. So it's not that big of a deal. It's a phenomenal learning experience to make now rather than on a very expensive nozzle, very expensive hot end or something like that. So, hey, welcome to the club. And finally, one that's been boggling my mind and I haven't been able to find a solution on it. So I'm asking you all, the viewers of Print Fix Friday that have made it this far to help me out because apparently you might be my only hope. This is the D6 die that has already been printed but is not in the shot because I forgot to put it in the shot and adding it now would be a continuity error. So we're not going to add it. It is just like you would expect. It's a six-sided die. It's got the Sanjay Mortimer Foundation logo on the bottom, and it is a multicolored object. I mean, you're like, okay, Grant, what's the point? This looks like it should look. Everything looks fine. But check this out. Multiple extruders. Infill extruder is set to number five. If we go to the actual print itself, number five is alive, but is green. And it's not green. I, I am totally confused as to why this doesn't work. If Prusa Slicer allows me to set the infill extruder, why is it not commanding it to work that way? I'd initially thought maybe because this is one model with a bunch of individual parts inside of it, but I tried turning it into a bunch of individual objects and that didn't work either. So I'm sitting here wondering, am I just dumb? Don't answer that before you hear the rest of it. Or is this something that doesn't work the way that it should? I looked on GitHub, I couldn't find anything. I even went through here and changed my wipe tower extruder to number five. And when you do that, it actually works. It changes the freaking wipe tower extruder to number five, but it doesn't use number five for the freaking infill. And I confirmed this by actually running this part with a non-silk material for what would be the blue here. And yeah, it used the same thing for the infill. So what the heck am I missing? Is this a bug? I couldn't see that it was already reported, but I also know that some people have a hard time explaining what the issue is. So what am I doing wrong? Help me out. I'd love to know. This one has thrown me for a loop. So I'd love to know your thoughts about this and if you've experienced an issue and if you've tried to solve this one yourself. That, that'd be awesome if you have, because I could use a little bit of help. And I love the help that all these names listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher have been providing us in assisting us in getting to Smurf. In fact, I'm already there when this video goes live. Thank you all for making that possible. This year, we are completely funding it from the awesome, generous contributions from viewers and donors like you. So if you do want to assist us in making awesome content for you guys to watch with some really awesome things coming up after Smurf, Make sure to join for as little as $1 a month. And you, of course, you get a lot of behind the scenes content, including footage that we never release to the general public. That's all we have for you all today. If you got this far, click the link below me to see the rest of Print Fix Friday. And right next to that will be the Prusa Tour, which we should be in the middle of. Hope you all enjoyed it. Hope you all enjoy me with long hair, because that's going to be an odd one going from long hair grant to short hair grant. But hey, that's the way it goes sometimes. Go watch the tour of Prusa Research. We show you things in there that have never been seen on camera before, and I think you guys are really going to like it. That's all we have for you all today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your love, and don't forget to leave a like and get subscribed. And as always, keep making awesome. And hey, pie me in the face or something. Don't make it weird, though. See ya.